Hi, I'm Tony Fink. I'm the pastor appointed to serve the Pine Island area for the United Methodist Church. And I'm James Miller, the online ministry specialist for the Pine Island United Methodist Church. We're so glad that you're with us watching this video. This is a shortened, edited version of our Sunday morning worship service. In the service, we're going to be talking about priorities. We're glad that you connected with us. If you'd like, say hi back to us with your first name. And if you're ever in Pine Island, we'd love to have you join us. Um, we have worship on Sunday mornings at 9 o'clock in our sanctuary. We have a coffee time together um, at 10 o'clock. And then at 1030, we have an outdoor parking lot service. If you'd like to see the complete worship service, it's available on our website. That's piumc.org. That service has all the music, um, all the prayers, um, the list of opportunities that we have to serve Jesus each week. Thanks again for joining us and watching this shorter edited version of our worship experience. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning. I'm Tony Fink. I'm the pastor appointed to serve the Pine Island area of the United Methodist Church. I'm in the sanctuary. We've had a chance to visit with each other as we've walked into the church and as we've been in the sanctuary. So we've had a chance to welcome folks here. For those of you online, I um, hope that you're welcoming each other as you're using the chat, the chat box. I see that Dean is waving his hand, so you guys are greeting each other, other this morning. Today in church, we'll be talking about the importance of priorities, um, but I also want to look over here to my, to my left, and it's not Joel Blair, it's Linda Lachel. Linda Lachel, um, has, um, within about the last day or so, at the last moment, um, is taking over for, for Joel for today. Joel has been hospitalized. Um, we want to report now, good news that he's now home, um, but Linda is filling in for this morning, and I appreciate you coming in and just such, such short notice. God so. is with us. Amen? Let me try that again. God is with us. Amen? Amen? And with Jesus by our side, we can do anything. So let's invite ourselves to join Jesus. Gracious God, as we come to worship today, help us to, to feel you. Help us to, to hear your spirit blowing in us as a pipe organ would. Help us to, to hear your voice to us. Allow us to be open to you and to have our lives filled with joy and love and peace. And with that in mind, our opening hymn, our opening song today is You Are My All in All. Um, words are on the screen in your bulletin, so let's sing together.
Well, good morning. How are you doing today? Great. It's good to hear. It's great to hear. I, I once had a coach I'd meet with like every month, and I'd ask, how are you doing? I'm doing okay. How are you doing? I'm doing amazing. So that makes all the difference in the world. You must work out in the public, and That's all I'm saying. So in my backpack today, I have got this bag. I've had this bag since I went to college. It was a gift from my Aunt Sue. I think it was, yeah, I'm sure it was from my Aunt Sue. And um, in this bag are all of my sewing supplies. Um, because last week, I had to repair something. So um, I got out my, my needles, and it was, it was a kind of a, um, a job that needed a really strong piece of thread, so I got one of my big needles out. Let me get this out. There we go. And I got my my heavy-duty thread. You guys ever use heavy-duty thread? Yeah, so you probably know where this is going. So let me get this tied on there. And of course, as I sat in my living room, That's not good. I had, a, I had a needle here. We'll find that one later on. There we go. Let me pull another one out. Oh, there it is. It's harder to find the needle in the carpet than it is on my sofa. So, and I, and sat in my living room, had turned on the lights bright so I could see what I was doing. And then I tried to thread the needle. And I got it in the first time and then went to, went to grab it. It came out. And then I had to try about six times, unlike now. You know, just when you count on the children's message being good and missing the needle, it went in the first time. I couldn't do that again if I tried, because I know I have. But it is hard, especially if you've got, like, the heavy-duty thread, to get it through an eye of a needle. And, and Jesus w was talking about needles that they were using back in his day, and he said, you know, to do something, it was like to put a camel through a needle. Now, a camel is a whole lot bigger than a piece of thread. And there's been a lot of commentary over the, over the millennial about what Jesus was actually saying with that. But, but there's a school of thought that says, actually, he was pretty accurate. That he was talking about a camel that had four legs and big going through a needle that was, there's no way you'd do it. And what he was talking about is that sometimes we get distracted. We, we, we run after the wrong things. And it's, it's so hard for us to follow God and enter the kingdom of God when we're pulled in all sorts of different directions. He says it's, it's practically impossible, like getting a camel through a needle. And um, that's what he was saying. And the disciples then went on to say, well, well, gosh, I mean, no one has any luck. You know, what, what, what chance is it for any of us? He says, well, actually, I think we're going to hear this man. With God, we can do it. So we have to first learn how to depend on God, but secondly, realize that if we are chasing the wrong directions, it's so hard for us to get to the kingdom of God, to, to live in that realm where God wants us to live. So I'm going to put this next to my scissors so I don't lose it. And let's just have a prayer. Dear God, dear God, we thank you, we thank you for Jesus and how he loves us. For Jesus and how he loves us. Help us to always follow you. Help us to always follow you. And do what you ask. And do what you ask. So we may enter your kingdom. So we may enter your kingdom. Amen. Well, good. Well, thanks. And Anne, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put that there for now. And pick up my stuff so I don't lose it. And Anne is going to come forward and lead us in Scripture this morning. Good morning. 
morning. Good morning. I'm Ann Murray, and I'm your scripture reader today. Please join me in the prayer for illumination. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. Our scripture reading today is from Mark chapter 10, verses 17 through 31. As Jesus continued down the road, a man ran up, knelt before him, and asked, Good teacher, what must I do to obtain eternal life? Jesus replied, Why do you call me good? No one is good except the one God. You know the commandments. Don't commit murder. Don't commit adultery. Don't steal. Don't give false testimony. Don't cheat. Honor your father and your mother. Teacher, he responded, I've kept all of these things since I was a boy. Jesus looked at him carefully and loved him. He said, you are lacking one thing. Go, sell what you own, and give the money to the poor. Then you will have treasures in heaven. And come, follow me. But the man was dismayed at these statements and went away saddened because he had many possessions. Looking around, Jesus said to his disciples, it will be very hard for the wealthy to enter God's kingdom. His words startled the disciples, so Jesus told them again, children, it's difficult to enter God's kingdom. It's easier for a camel to squeeze through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter God's kingdom. They were shocked even more and said to each other, then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them carefully and said, It's impossible with human beings, but not with God. All things are possible for God. Peter said to him, Look, we've left everything and followed you. Jesus said, I assume that anyone who has left house, brothers, sisters, mother, father, children, or farms because of me and because of the good news will receive 100 times as much now in this life, houses, brothers, sisters, mothers, children, and farms with harassment, and in the coming age, eternal life. But many who are, but many who are first will be last, and many who are last will be first. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Ann. So, how would you like to have a life described with the words love, hmm? joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Each of those words is great. You know, as I go through the list, I think, boy, the thing I want more than anything is joy. Sometimes I'm missing that. But to have a life that, that, that can be described from the outside of someone watching you with these words. You know, if you've been around with me long enough, you know the drill, right? We talk about Jesus being our Lord and Savior. Not just Jesus as our Savior, mind you, but as Lord and Savior. And then, you know, the question's coming. The question coming is this. If Jesus is our Lord, that means we do what Jesus commands us to do. So, what does Jesus command us to do? And by now, you should already think in your head, ooh, 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 I got it, I got it. We know the answer, right? It's love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul and mind and strength. And, what's the second one? Love your neighbor as yourself. Yes. We know the answer. We've been through the drill before, right? Got it pat down, down, okay? One of these weeks, I won't have to preach that sermon. But, I find it interesting 
that in the Gospels we have the same question that's asked by two different people and Jesus gives two different answers. Okay? In one version we have the legal expert or the scribe or in some accounts it's a Pharisee and they ask the question, what must I do to, eternal, to inherit eternal life? Okay? And in, the, in today's reading, it's a man who seems to have many possessions. Teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? So to refresh our minds, first, the religious authority version of the story. Okay? This at one happens to come from the Gospel of Luke. We hear a legal expert stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to gain eternal life? Jesus replied, what is written in the law? How do you interpret it? He responded, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your being, with all your strength, with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus said to him, you have answered correctly. Do this and you will live. And in other versions of the story, you also hear that, that these two commandments, love God, love your neighbor, they sum up all the commandments that God gave to Moses. So we have it boiled down to love God, love your neighbor. But there's a subtle difference in the answer that we hear in today's story. Okay? From today, in the Gospel of Mark, the person talking with Jesus is a man who seems to have many possessions. This is how this one goes. As Jesus continued down the road, a man ran up, knelt before him and asked, Good teacher, what must I do to obtain eternal life? Jesus replied, Why do you call me good? No one is good except the one God. You know the commandments. Don't commit murder. Don't commit adultery. Don't steal. Don't give false testimony. Don't cheat. Honor your father and mother. Teacher, he responded, I've kept all these things since I was a boy. Jesus looked at him carefully and loved him. He said, you are lacking one thing. Go, sell what you own and give the money to the poor. Then you will have treasure in heaven. And come, follow me. But the man was dismayed. He was dismayed at the statement and he went away saddened because he had many possessions. So with the two stories, did you catch it when it was read with, with Anne before? Jesus gives a different list of commandments to this man if he's to obtain eternal life. Jesus' answer to this man today is a practical answer compared to the theological answer that Jesus gave to the religious authorities. Now, did you recognize the list of commandments in today's story? Chris is going, yeah, they sound familiar. Yeah, they should, because they are part of the Ten Commandments. Okay? In Sunday school, they were on the walls. We learned them. But it's also interesting that it's only the second half of the Ten Commandments. Starting with Commandment 5, Honor your father and your mother. You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor, you shall not cover your neighbor's house, nor his wife, nor anything that belongs to your neighbor. So, so these six are the ones that talk about how we behave in relation to one another. So which of the top ten are missing? Huh? Well, the first four, right? The ones that relate to how we, um, that, that talk about how we relate to who? To God. These are the first four that Jesus didn't mention in today's reading. Number one, I am the Lord your God. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God. And remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. So, I don't know if Carl had an itch or he was thinking but I saw your head going, why? Why did Jesus focus only on the second half of the Ten Commandments? That's a great question to ponder, huh? I don't know if I've got the answer. This might not be it, but I wanted to consider this today. 
You see, in this story, Jesus knew, in the way that only Jesus seems to know what's in people's hearts, that this man was a good and righteous man. Okay? He was a good man. He did what was right. Remember what he said? Teacher, he responded, I have kept all these things since I was a child. He was doing all the right things. He was checking all the boxes. But, but he was missing something deep inside. Jesus looked at him carefully and loved him. He said, you are lacking one thing. Jesus knew that that something was getting in the way of this man living, truly living, an abundant, eternal life. Somehow this man who had many possessions, who had everything, was doing all the right stuff, somehow he had the wrong priorities. Jesus looked at him carefully and loved him. He said, you are lacking one thing. Go. Go. Sell what you own and give the money to the poor. Then you will have treasure in heaven. And come, follow me. But the man was dismayed at the statement, and he went away saddened because he had many possessions. Hmm. He had many possessions, or, or perhaps many things possessed him. And I want to pause here, and I want us to also recognize and and realize what Jesus didn't say, because sometimes this gets misquoted. Jesus did not say, go, sell all that you own and give the money to the poor. That's not what he said. Jesus said, go, sell what you own and give the money to the poor. Jesus didn't ask him to sell absolutely everything. He told him to just sell enough to help him loosen his grip on the things that he thought he owned. And once he he loosened his grip on those things, he would be freed. He would be freed to see from a different perspective. He might be able to see what is truly important. Might be able to see what his priorities could be. And with a shift of priorities, looking beyond himself and caring for others, he would have a better chance of living a life that could be described with the terms of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, Gentleness, self-control. Isn't that a great list? Doesn't that sound like a life that has God-given abundance just, just flowing out of that into other people? I, I've known Linda Lachel and Dave Lachel for, for too many decades. Not too many, but a lot of decades, Okay. And you guys know me better than people here. And and you guys would would probably be witnesses that I don't always live such a God-given good life, okay, as this list from Galatians 5 has. There are times that I allow my priorities, and probably more often than not, allow my priorities to get scrambled, okay? Dave, don't agree with me so heartily. Amen! (laughs) I've shared with you, yeah, I've shared with you over the years in conversation about these things. But I also have to say that I may have gotten close for a couple minutes this past week, okay? You see, the call came in from Ben and Hannah up in Morris, and and it was not all going well with little baby Jack. So they asked if there was any way that, that Jolene could drive up to Morris and help out there for a couple days. Okay, now, before I go on, I want you to remember that Jolene is the real hero of the story, okay? But when that call came in, I just happened to be walking through the parsonage. 
what a, what a chance, okay? Usually I'm not there. But I just happened to be walking through the parsonage because I was coming back to church from making a couple of visits around town. So I overheard, you know, part of this conversation. And at that moment, as I was hearing what the question was, was being, I started thinking about all the stuff I had on my plate. Okay? The list of the priorities that I had at that moment. You see, i just come from visiting one of our newer guests in church, and he was asking for a favor. And I'd just gone to see another church member and, and realized that they had just been rushed by ambulance to Rochester. Dave, when a, when a church member gets rushed by ambulance, does that touch a pastor's heart? Yeah. And there was a message that needed to be returned about the financial, our financial crisis that we're having in church now. And I needed to get ready for a meeting that evening. And that was in addition to all the usual stuff I have to get done on that day of the week. I had a lot of stuff on my plate. But as important as these things of church were, something was more important and it had a greater priority. Guess what it was? My family. In the middle of all that other important stuff that was flying around, I took a breath and I took a pause and I took some time. I took time to be with her granddaughter, Clara, to play with her, to run around the house with her, and to be with her while Jolene prepared, took care of the rest of her schedule for the week, and packed her suitcase for this unexpected multi-day trip. Okay, and again, I want to be honest and say, at this, in this case, Jolene was the even better example of showing what was most important and changing a whole week of things planned. Okay? She showed her priorities, how quickly she turned on a dime. But also for a few moments, this last week, I also was able to say where my priorities were and actually live them out. Because I always like to think family's more important than church, but that's not always the case for me. But for a couple minutes, I got it right. Jesus looked at him carefully and loved him. He said, you are lacking one thing. So, so imagine Jesus looking into your eyes carefully and loving you. What would Jesus tell you? What are your priorities? Hmm? What might be getting in your way of loving God more fully and, and living an abundant life which just happens to be eternal? How could we tell? Well, I just got a lecture on this on Tuesday because we're preparing for a retreat coming up in February, okay? About priorities, some ideas. Think back on what you've spent your money on this last month or so. Okay? Think where your money has gone. Think back and consider where you've spent your time this last month or so. Where's the time gone? Consider the thoughts that you have harbored in your heart. And then think. Is there anything in your life that has had a higher priority than loving God and loving your neighbor. Loving God. Loving your neighbor. The, these two things are, are tied together in some, some divinely mysterious way. Because we remember the 25th chapter of Mark. You're, you're going to remember the story. When, when the Son of Man comes in majesty and, and he separates people as easily as a shepherd separates sheep from goats. Okay, And then we get to hear who gets to inherit the kingdom prepared for them, right? Remember the story? Do you remember the list that we hear? He said, I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me a drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you gave me clothes to wear. I was sick and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. So, so what are your priorities? 
what might be getting in the way of you loving God more fully and living an abundant life that, that just happens to be eternal? Can our lives be described with these words? Love, joy, peace, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Jesus looked at him carefully and loved him. He said, you are lacking one thing. What would Jesus be telling you today? Let's think on this as we sing our next hymn, Whatever You Do. As we um, finish our service today, let us join together in our breakthrough prayer. Let's stand as we have our breakthrough prayer together. Let's pray. Holy Spirit, break through to renew and revive our church, unleashing new life. Empower us to proclaim the good news of Jesus' resurrection and the promise of abundant eternal life. Transform and boldly use us without limits, delays, or excuses to reach new people, to make new disciples of Jesus Christ, and to transform the world. Amen. 
Let's remain standing as we sing the hymn, O Jesus, I Have Promised. Let us go forth with our dismissal and our blessing. We have been made free by the love of God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Go into the world to serve God by helping others. We go go forth forth and bring bring God's God's love, joy, joy, peace, peace, and and kindness kindness with with us wherever we go. Go Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. God.